voilà, le nouveau addition du ripstick. <laughs> They should have called a real artist. <laughs> Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are here today to talk about the brand new line of Elan ripsticks for 2025. And it's funny when you add in the old ones, there's a lot of skis on this we one. We got a lot of ripsticks yeah. up here. <laughs> um, this is just representative of the unisex or, or men's collection. Uh, we don't have any of the women's specific models up here. We can touch on that briefly. A um, couple days ago, we did that on snow review of the new 96 and the new 96 Black Edition. Um, I had a lot of fun. Yep. I think like it's not it's not a secret to our audience or certainly to anybody that works here that I have like grown quite fond of ripsticks. Um, I know others have as well, but I came up just on the lift ride the other day with Rory. He was like, I could tell watching all the videos that like Jeff's the ripstick guy. Right. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, I just like, I remember the first time I, not the first time I skied them, but the first time I skied sort of the more recent change, like this ski right here, I was just blown away. Yeah. And it was like a nice like reminder or, or like learning moment for me that I didn't necessarily need a super heavy, super stiff ski to achieve the things that I want to achieve. And I think more and more skiers are starting to realize that as well. Yeah, and that came up on the on the lift as well in that conversation with our friend. He's like, this seems to be what, you know, like someone who's not really in the ski industry, I mean, he's a groomer, but right. he even was very astute to say, it seems like a lot of people should be on these. Yeah, no, he did like, say yeah. that. Yeah, and like that's... That, that's always been one of the highlights of these skis is just how approachable they are yeah. and how many different skiers they can work <clears> for. Um, and I think that the same is true with the new line. Um, we'll do construction, we'll do shape. Before we do that, I just wanna talk about the line in general. Um, it has shifted just a little bit. So anything up here with bindings on it is one of the new skis. So basically we've got 88, which interestingly is according to the catalog, now 90 underfoot. Yep. So slight change there, but the name is the same. Um, and then we've got 96, and then we've got 96 Black Edition, and we've got a 102. So I would say, Bob, on your side of the wall, things change more dramatically. Yes. Um, 102 replaces 106. I think that's fair, right? Even though there's a ski that's closer to it in width. Yeah, but it's the 102 is closer to the 106 than a 96 is to a 102, so. Sure, yep, <laughs> <laughs> that is also true. Um, so we've got 102, and then the ski that's kind of directly behind Bob is the 102 Black Edition. Yep. And then we've got a 108. So the 116 yep. goes away. Um, the 108 is now the widest ripstick, and I know you mentioned this, I think, in, in the written article, Bob, that the Playmaker 111, yeah. a new Playmaker, is now the widest Elan ski. Yep. Which I think is fine. Sure. Not every manufacturer needs something that's 116, 120, whatever. Right. How many of those, I mean, how many of these do you think they sold? Not, probably not. 116s? Not, yeah. Not, not many. Um, and then I brought a prop because I wanted to refer to some just kind of different stuff on the women's side. We get 88, 94. So no changes there, but yeah. then we get 100 and 106. So I like the new breakdown and we can talk about it more when we get to those skis, but I think this 102 is going to be a real winner where that 106 I think was more, not that it was necessarily like pigeonholed, but I think there was a more specific application for it yeah. where that 102 is just like, supremely versatile it really reminds me a lot of 96 yeah just slightly different so i wanted to bring up the change in widths i also wanted to talk a little bit about length so i feel like the best visual is maybe what's going on right behind me um, so this is a 175 new ripstick 96 this is a 180 
new or old Ripstick 96. This is a 182.88. This 180 length is actually closer to the 175 than it is to the 182. I hope you can see that on camera. If not, just trust me. <laughs> so <laughs> basically what happened is Alan kind of changed the way that they measure the length. So previously they were kind of measuring the running length. Mm -hmm. So the curves included as part of that length measurement. Now they're just basically taking a tape measure and going tip to tail yep. 175. So I've been skiing this 175 mostly being a former 180 skier. So yeah, and just interesting that they changed that. And I've been on 182s pretty strictly, and they're fine, but I always like the longer yeah, you get the 188s in the, in the older version. So yeah, and now you get 189. Get 189 in everything. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. They haven't made their way into the country yet. So. Yep. Um, and then, Bob, do you want to kind of take us through the construction changes? Because they're not. Yeah crazy but it, they're still significant i think yeah and the nice thing is that they're all the same so we yes. can use a, a yeah, 102 we'll do, here we'll do normal and then we can yep. talk about black edition um so we still have uh tube light wood core you know that's been the foundation for ripstick for years uh it's a blend of poplar and polonia wood uh, that lightweight polonia really stands out you know we're yep. talking about very light skis. When we talked about Ripstick 96s the other day, it really it kept coming up yep. for how light these things are. It's pretty incredible. Uh, and then for regular Ripstick, uh, we are still getting those tubes that run alongside. Uh, and that 360 degree application of carbon in these skis is really the driving force behind the energy. We've talked about it at length. Uh, that carries through. So you're still getting that same Ripstick feel throughout. Uh, one of the bigger changes they did was to include unidirectional carbon uh, on the ski and they put it on the bottom of the core uh, to increase the smoothness of it and just a little bit less chattery uh, on the top of the ski where the older carbon uh, laminate would sit. So two unidirectional strips of carbon that run uh, on the sides uh, below the wood core and that really just increases both the smoothness and the response. Yep. So the carbon being closer to the snow does make it feel a little bit more responsive. Uh, and then we are missing now the vapor tips here. Yep. So running a full wood core uh, yep. from tip to tail. Uh, and in lieu of the, uh, that vapor tip technology, they're now putting a strip of flax uh, kind of in the forebody of the ski. And that's their, that's their damping agent. Yeah. So that's keeping the ski a little bit more composed. Uh, and quite effective. Yeah. It's actually like I give the flax a lot of credit yep. for the feel of these new skis. And it's something that we've seen in like Solomon. You yep. know, the QST skis use a, a blend of that uh, or the stance, I should say. Um, but it works there and it works here as well. So it's, a, it, it's an interesting new concept for that. Um, and that's pretty much regular ripstick. Um, carbon tubes obviously being the big story here. Uh, so then when we move into the new black edition, uh, all that carries through. So carbon tubes along the side, flax in the forebody. Yep. Um, we get unidirectional carbon on both sides. And then there's additional carbon in the black edition, uh, still have quad rods. So one additional tube through the center in the forebody and another one through the tail here. And then we get a C-ply carbon laminate that sits in the mid body of the ski. So just a horizontal laminate that goes under foot here. Uh, and that's adding to that, that stiffness under foot and adding to the grip. Yep. Um, but no other <laughs> real monumental changes from construction. Uh, still just incredibly light. You know, when we're talking yep. about the build of the ski, we're, t we're basically talking about how light it is. It is a little bit thinner of a core profile we've noticed as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not a huge difference in weight. Uh, you know, even in the catalog, Elan states that the, that the skis are, you know, 1,700 grams plus or minus 50. Yep. You know, and we see that range just based on different wood grains or different amount of epoxies. There's always going to be some type of variance yep. in weight. So 
it's barely worth noting, you know, noting. We will say that the new ones do feel a little bit lighter. Yeah, and I think like the 96 is probably the best ski to compare yeah. old to new because it's the closest in, in width and all that stuff. Yeah. And I, if anything, it seems like the new ski is, is plus or minus 50 grams lighter. Yeah. So not, and, a, not a huge change, but certainly still fits in the same like spot in this category yeah. or any, any, this is a multiple categories up here, but there's still certainly some of the lighter skis that you're going to find. And adding to that too, one of the other things is they're using this slightly tapered trapezoidal um, shaping in the top sheet. You know, yep. I think that that can blend between uh, construction and shape, which you'll talk about. But uh, that's an, a, a thing that's borrowed from Playmaker. Yep. You know, where we saw just that kind of thinning of the of the upper laminate there. Yeah, um, making I think it just, just a like, little bit quicker. It's also like. I know this is something that Alan is very proud of and something that they've emphasized to me in a lot of the conversations that we've had is just that like the finish quality is a little bit nicer, yep. which is interesting to me because I never really, I never would have thought of the ripsticks as skis that didn't have nice finish quality, but it is, you know, when you look at this ski, particularly how the top sheet kind of rolls over like you were talking about compared to the previous ski, it does just look a little nicer Yeah, and, and should should do a good job increasing durability. Yeah. And like, it's a funny durability because it's just visual. Like some people right. really, really get bothered <laughs> by it, <clears throat> like top sheet chipping. Some people don't care at all. Right. I put myself in the group that doesn't really care at all, but I totally understand if you're spending a lot of money on skis, you don't want them to look beat up by the end of the season. 100%. So um, that's it for construction. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Um, before we get into shape, we talked about weight really quick. Uh, flex pattern is interesting. I would say over here on my side of the wall, it's pretty similar. So right. new 96, nice supple flex pattern. Old 96, nice supple, fairly soft flex pattern yep. overall. Um, you've found some differences over there. I would say the most noticeable is how much softer this 102 is like especially up here in the shovel yeah and it's really true as you go down down that side of the wall with the new skis compared to excuse me old 106 is quite a bit stiffer well we we also noticed over the years that the that the the older version older the current versions of the ripsticks they kind of got a little bit thicker in the core profile a little bit stiffer as they went up in in width and the new ones are more consistent. Yep. So, you know, it's not like the new one is softer relative, but compared to the one it's replacing. Yes. So they're all kind of, they're all now more similar. Well, Whereas and I think it's a better progression to, too, because right. like I, in my mind, a 102, hundred percent should be softer than a 96. Yeah. And that's like sort of the progression that we have now. Yep. Um, so speaking to shape, uh, to me, the most interesting thing about the shape is just how they tweaked the dimensions a tiny bit. So again, I think the 96 is the best example here. To put it like as simply as possible, they basically narrowed the shovel by about three millimeters and they widened the tail by about three millimeters. Yeah. So turn radius largely stays the same it just kind of gives the ski a slightly different feel which is something that we noticed on snow testing this it doesn't rip you into a turn quite as much as the old skis used to but that also gives it like more versatility for different turn shapes different edge angles stuff yeah. like that we kind of talked a lot about how this ski really really liked a high edge angle and not that the new ski doesn't but i think it's more compliant at any edge angle yeah, it's certainly more amenable to creating those different turn shapes and styles. Yep. Another thing that's that's interesting and I think most noticeable on the 88 is the increase in early taper. Yeah. Which I think makes sense for this ski because it's always been like, you know, speaking to the 88 to 90 all mountain class, I would say this has always been one of the best mogul skis and that tip shape like kind of, continues that trend. Yeah, and I was noticing too that like these skis are all in Alan's free ride 
department. Right. Wingman and is all mountain. Wingman is all mountain. Good point. So they, that's a narrow free ride ski. That's a narrow free ride ski. Yeah. And they have accentuated the free ride capabilities with the increase in that taper, a little bit wider, and a little bit more energy out of the tail. Yep. So I think that that's an, 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 an interesting move over there, yep. uh, especially if you think about it through a free ride lens. Yep. Um, anything else you want to talk about, construction or shape, or just line overview? I think we can get into the line. The rocker, you know, we're still dealing with that amphibio rocker profile, so yeah. that hasn't changed. No, it, that, um, we would, it would be silly to skip yeah, over that. Still There's have still that. a right and left ski. Yeah. The construction is a little bit different, you know, just the carbon's a little bit longer on the inside edge. Yep. Um, but the rocker profile is still asymmetric, uh, and that just gives it a very smooth overall feel. It um, makes turn transitions just extremely, like, intuitive. So easy. And like you match yeah. your angle, like all your angulation stays like yeah. correct, like way more easily. It's fascinating. I find that like skiers that like tend to either diverge or have a, you know, just have like yeah. a hard time matching their skis. Right. These help. These do not do that. Like no, exactly. every turn is perfectly parallel. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's almost like a teaching aid. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing I'll say, like, even it's easy for me looking down on your end and just seeing a slight difference in the tip rocker profile of that 88 specifically. Oh, I can um, see it down on your end, too. You can see it down on mine, yeah. Yeah, the new ones are flatter. They're flatter. Less splay. Yep. But length of rocker, I would say, is, is It's, is it's about, very similar. I looked at it yesterday. Same. And that's more in the tip. The tails are, uh, tails are pretty darn similar. For splay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of see it there. A little flatter, maybe a touch longer in the, in the new ski. Yep. But that was yeah. That was the only thing that jumped out to me visually looking down the line. There is that the eighty eight specifically is flatter. Yep. No, that's a good point. Um, you want to talk about each ski real quick? Yeah. It'll be quick, so this video is not fifty minutes <laughs> long because I don't even know how long it's been already. Um, eighty eight. You want one of the new ones? We'll each hold a new one. Great. Uh, what do you think? You spent quite a bit of time on this guy. Yeah, and this has kind of been my habitually favorite one. Sure. <laughs> the one that fits my style the best. Yep. Uh, I really just love these quick short turns that this thing makes. Um, we had it out yesterday and was kind of able to open it up more on soft snow going yep. down Perry Merrill, uh, which was a nice treat. You know, we've kind of been uh, beholden to firmer snow and that'll kind of enter the conversation more as we get into the 102s. Yep. Um, but certainly on the 88, this is where in the ripstick line, you get the biggest benefit is when you're mixing firm and soft snow. Yeah, I think as, that's true. As we get down the line, we start to move more towards softer snow. Yeah. But I think that the energy that this ski creates in firm snow, uh, bumps, trees, anything quick that you need to do, off the charts. Yep. So really well-rounded, extremely versatile. You know, we could get in fights about 88 versus 96 being... Which is best. Yeah, or more useful. Sure. <laughs> But, you Are you know, on the 88 side? I'm on the 88 That's side. That's why we would fight? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, no, I think this ski's awesome. I, I definitely, I'm more, I, I feel more comfortable and more at home on the 96. I'm yeah. not exactly sure why, but I've always just really liked that Ripstick 96. The thing that I think is best about this new version of the 88 compared to the old one is it's a little bit more confidence-inspiring. I think just like... The flax in the shovel and mm -hmm. taking out the vapor tip has has gone a long way to just make it like pretty consistent and predictable through this portion of the ski. So it's not like tremendously stiffer or more powerful overall. Yeah. I just find it like you as a skier feel more comfortable kind of pushing the speed up just a tiny bit. And still just constantly reminded of how stable a ski can be at like 1700 grams less, I think. or less, less yeah. yeah 16 and change yeah which is just incredible yeah um but again i'm going to reserve full judgment you know we'll get to do before you ski the 189 yeah we'll get to do longer reviews but um yeah again i'm gonna this is the 182 the 180 in the old skis was always a little bit short for me but this felt good but i still want to reserve judgment sure so and like also important to note that compared to the 180 previous ski you know, if we were talking in that 
length, yeah. like how they talked about lengths in the previous skis, this is like a 185. Right. So maybe it's some perception of the 182. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it's tricking you, Bob. I'm easily fooled. That's fine. Because compared, like that 189 in the new way they measure, yeah. like that would be a 192. Yeah, given how light it is and that flex, I think it's going to be... You think you're going to like it? I think it's going to be all right. Cool. Um, moving on, the new 96 here. Um, I think this ski is incredible. I think it is so much fun carving. It's like really easy to bend. We talked about all of this stuff in that on snow review, but it's so easy to bend. And then the way that they build in edge grip through amphibio through the carbon rods through all the different technology in this ski to me is just incredibly impressive and like i wouldn't believe it you know what i mean if yeah. i hadn't skied them before and you just handed me this ski and like its weight and its flex pattern and its shape i would be like that's not gonna be very capable right but it is it's highly capable it's pretty pretty darn impressive and i know i said it in the video but I used to feel kind of in between this previous normal 96 and the 96 black edition. And this to me was plenty, plenty yeah. of ski. Even at a 175, you can ski it pretty darn fast. I think that more impressive than the capabilities are just that how exciting and interesting it is. Yes. Like, yes, there's a performance level that it can hit, yep. but really where it excels is in this mid-range where creativity and like fun and adventure yeah come in yep so i think that they really do a great job of harnessing those attributes with this 96. yeah no it's just a really good ski and like i think it's also fair to say that there's a limit to it yeah like you find that limit pretty regularly i think it's fair to say yeah yeah like being 225 pounds and a big skier that likes to ski pretty fast sometimes yep. like yeah it's not there there might be better options for someone like you like someone your size with with a lot of skiing experience but yeah i think that's a pretty small percentage of the skiing population well and it's all about what you're ex what you're expecting too you yeah. know it's like i'm not expecting that mantra right like performance out right. of this so you do have to adjust your mentality to it yep so if you are happy settling into what this ski does really, really well, you're going to be extremely happy. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where, like, if you're closer to my size or, like, yeah. I would say anything under 180, that's a random number that I just came up with, but yeah, it seems but it's more, right. Yeah, but it's more average. Yeah. yeah. I would say anybody that, like, with a body weight under 180 pounds, it literally doesn't matter what your ability level or skiing style is. You're not... This is not going to hold you back. If you're heavier than that, and you're an advanced expert skier, and you're aggressive, yeah. that's where the limitation comes in. But I think that's fine. I'll have to take your word for it. I don't think I've seen 180 since sophomore year of high school. Nor, <laughs> nor should you. I don't think I want to know, Bob, yeah. 180. I feel like that would, you'd look kind of unhealthy. <laughs> and if you are that skier, yeah. they make this ski. I know. Um, and I think, like... Do you think it's fair to say that these are closer in performance than the previous normal and black edition? There's a smaller gap between new yeah. black edition and regular and old. Yeah, but yeah. would you also think it's fair to say that it definitely kicks up the, the top end capabilities a little bit? Yeah, say, but especially in this 96? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna wait until, until you get a 189. The longer length to. Sure. to say that in totality, but I do think that there's just, there's, like, this didn't do it in the in the old black edition. Like the, the flex. The flex. No. You know, the older black edition is... Shovel's definitely a little stiffer. ...has a stiffer shovel. Um, so there is something to be desired if you're looking for that big jump sure. to top-end performance. Sure. So I would say that skiers almost will have an easier time choosing now because they're closer yeah I think <laughs> it doesn't you're not going to make a wrong decision no i think i think so too and i i mean i i got to ski 175 
96, and then right after skied 175, 96 black edition, yeah. and I definitely felt the difference. Like, yeah. you feel it, to me, I feel it more from midfoot through the tail. Like, that part of the ski is so much stiffer and stronger that it, it definitely holds a little bit more, yeah. better. So if you are worried about kind of pushing past the abilities of, of a normal ripstick, you, you, have, you have an option here. And if you're really worried about it, then there are stronger skis out there. 100%. You know, that's... Like new enforcers. Right. Like those are all heavier, stiffer, yeah. stronger skis. And I think they're, they're stronger than, than this, too, yeah. I think. We have to keep in mind that these are still designed to be light. They're yeah. light carbon powered skis. Yeah, exactly. You can't get the same stuff out of it than you can out of a dual metal laminate right, ski when it comes to dampness. But it's 400 grams lighter. Right, right. So it's so much easier to throw around. And we had skied another 98 millimeter twin tip that almost had 1,000 grams <laughs> right. on these. Right, so, just a twin tip. Yeah. Wood core, yep. twin tip. So you do have to keep this in mind that it is intended to be a lightweight, yep. energetic, playful ski. Yep. So. Yep. And I'd like I know so many people were like really like really really wanted the black editions yeah. previously and I totally understand why. I feel like you're going to see more more of just normal normal ripsticks. I think so. Or I kind of hope so. Yeah. 102 I think once we move to this side of the sign, it starts to get a little different. It, it's it's more of an application. I think it's we we cease to see firm snow and groomers as being the focus. The focus, and yeah. we're really starting to get into you should be in something softer. Yeah, something softer or off piece. Yeah, like, and there's like a lot of companies will focus their like 102s. Armada jumps to mind. A declivity 102. Sure. Um, as being you know, a more stable and powerful version of something like this. Um, or Mantra 102 if you want to take it to the Mantra extreme. 102, yeah. This one definitely feels like it belongs in softer snow with more playfulness in mind. Yeah. This is like, I'm very excited about this. Yeah. This ski is awesome. Because like a lot of the things that I like about, honestly, I hadn't even thought about it until literally this moment. A lot of things I like about the new Playmaker 101, that, that, like you yeah. can find in here. Yep. Like for being a directional ski that's 102 underfoot, it, it's super playful and really fun and like kind of easily flickable. But then it has like this like round, supple flex pattern. So like on Perry Merrill yesterday when I got on this, it was starting to soften up yeah. quite a bit. And it was like just trenching into turns. Like, I remember talking about that with the K2 Reckoners and how they like control torsional stiffness with carbon spectral braid. And that ski is so soft longitudinally, but yeah. you could just trench into a, into a turn because it had good torsional stiffness. I felt a lot of that in this ski too. Um, and then like we skied Hayride yesterday, which was super firm, but ungroomed as well. Yeah. And it, did, it wasn't like, it only lasted for about 20 seconds, but I, I just pointed it down the fall line and basically like let the ski run because I wanted to see what it felt like just kind of skipping over like frozen moguls, basically. Not moguls, but frozen Bump, bumps. Un undulations. Yeah. Uh, and I was blown away. And like Matt Stromecki was following me and we stopped and he was like, that was pretty terrifying. Yeah. And I was like, no, <laughs> like that was great. Like that, it fully surpassed my expectation of what this this ski can do and I just think there's so many more people that are gonna really really like this compared to the 106 like that got pretty big yeah and it's it's like like you were just saying like with that the thickness of the core profile and that ski it got it's like kind of stiff and then it like it just took away some of its versatility and I'd say especially the 106 black edition but even the normal one felt like lightweight big mountain skis where this feels like just east to west, doesn't matter where you live, this is just an incredibly versatile off-piece ski. Yeah. Not like big mountain chargey. Yeah, and for me, this thing starts in the softness that we had yesterday on Perry Merrill. Like that's as firm sure. as I can deal with this. Sure. I would imagine that I wouldn't have any trouble on it at all. 
yeah. on really firm snow. Yeah. And I think, again, it's a, it's a skier weight thing. And like, you know, it's really interesting. And I think we've had this conversation about ripsticks before. When you're talking, when you're bringing skier weight into it, it's like the opposite of how we've reacted to head cores. Right. Where like you tend to have a better time on head cores because you're heavier and you can bend them more easily. And I struggle to bend them. So I get, it's like tricky to find the, the sweet spot where the is like, I can bend them really easily. Yeah. And then it's the opposite for you. You can bend them so easily that you can find, you find a limitation more quickly. It is funny that we have this conversation with carbon powered skis. Right. More than right. More than metal powered skis. Well, I think <laughs> and I think that's reflective of carbon powered skis yeah. and like how different they can be where just throw a couple of sheets of metal in a ski and it's gonna feel like it's got a couple of sheets of metal in it. Yeah. There's more moving parts and stuff like this. Yep. Um, Ripstick one oh two black edition. Yep. Uh, it definitely ticks it up a little bit. Again, like very similar to how the 96 does, but it's still like, and I think it, the, exactly the same thing that we were just saying about the 102 compared to the 106 applies to this compared to the 106 black edition is like, that's a reasonably soft flex pattern. Yeah. And give me a, give me an old 106 black edition. That is like, we really need our friends from Sooth Ski to come measure these things. Yeah. Yeah. The bendings, they're the, the flex stiffness. What do they measure it? Newton meters? Something like that. Like, is yeah. this is this twice as stiff? I don't, it feels it. Like, it, it kind of feels. Yeah. So it just, I, I do think it changes the personality quite a bit. I feel like these two skis here, 96 Black Edition, they have more similar personalities. Yeah, they're a bit closer. Old to new, yeah. where this... These feel like different skis to me. Yeah. And again, this just like, it just feels more versatile for different skiers and different applications. And it, it definitely still is quieter and more damp than this 102. One, yep. So it does tick up the performance a little bit. And if you are a high speed aggressive skier, this is going to be the sweet spot for you. Um, but. Yeah, definitely closer. I had the most success on this new black edition yesterday. Um, we left you and I took Chris in the woods a little bit, showing him a new photography spot that I found the other day. Yep. And so, you know, our woods these days are very firm and mogul filled and tight and you really got to kind of maneuver your, your way around. Yeah, this and, just... And that's where this thing stood out for me. Yeah, it adapts like, more. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's super easy to, to twist and, uh, you know, we were kind of playing around with the twisting yesterday. Like, I'm sure it doesn't show up, but, you know, I can yeah, I don't twist think, this thing pretty easily. I don't think many people are as strong as you either. Yeah. Like, I came in here and tried <laughs> to do that and was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But, you, but it was actually like, it was really fun because you can feel it on the snow when you're, when yeah. you're just kind of steering your feet. The ski really follows and adapts to it's what more you're, compliant yeah 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 it really makes you feel like you're in 1000 percent control well and that's how i felt on yeah. this which I, I feel like that's probably that makes sense yeah you know it's like what you found in this for it's how it adapts to terrain yeah. variations at my weight would come through more on that yeah i mean it's kind of like i don't know what animal i'm thinking of but that they're able to be so dexterous you know, it reminds me of um, articulated tightenal banding. Okay, sure. And declivities, yep. how they are letting the shovel of the yeah. ski like twist and adapt. I think similar concept, different technology. Yeah. I don't know, a mountain goat that their hooves kind yeah, of sure. adapt to that and really, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think I think compared to the, the 106 Black Edition, I think that's a, a more useful ski for most skiers. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to... 108 here. Um, admittedly, we have spent the least amount of time on this, so we can spend the least amount of time talking about it. Uh, it's definitely not the same as the 116. I no. would say, if anything, it's a little bit closer to the mm -hmm. outgoing 106. Yeah. Um, but still, like, drastically softer flex pattern than, than the 106. Than even the regular 106. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Which I think actually is 
important because then it boosts the powder performance. Yep. And this is the new, like, if you're getting a ripstick for powder, this is it. And having, like, you know, that right there. Right. That's going to like drastically enhance float, or at least your the skier's perception of float. Yeah, no, I think this is going to be a very useful ski for those that are literally spending their time in soft snow. Yes, and you know you're gonna you're gonna get some type of on trail performance, but I think as Not they much. get, I, yeah. I think we're finding that as they get wider, then that certainly falls off a little bit, which makes sense. Yeah. And didn't necessarily exist in the previous versions of ripsticks. Right. Until you got to 116. Yeah. Because, like, the 106s, both of them were, like, re was, really good on trail. Yeah, they were strong and on then trail like, skis. And then, like, you know, and, yeah. like, at 106, like, is there really a purpose or benefit to that? Yeah. And I would say yes, but only for a small percentage of yeah. skiers. So, I'm excited. Yeah, hopefully we'll get some snow and we can... Get these things out. <laughs> totally. We've got a handful of wide skis. I know. They're, <laughs> they're collecting dust right now. <laughs> to get tested. And I don't think it's snowed here in what? Three, three weeks? It's four, been a while. Four weeks? I mean, we had freezing fog for like a week straight. Which I don't think freezing fog counts, think counts as snow. snow. <laughs> no. But I oh, like well. your op I optimism. Know. It was white. <laughs> sure. Uh, so anyways, those are the new ripsticks. Uh, I'm really excited about them. Again, I think like the the easiest way to understand this is the skis over here on my side of the wall. Yes, they are different, but they are more similar to the previous skis, the skis that they replace. Over there on your side, I, I think it's a it's a different story. Yeah. And I think it's kind of exciting. Yep. Um, you know, over here just feels like basically an enhancement of what they had before. Yeah. And over there is like this is like the whole new line. These are whole yeah, yeah. totally new skis. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's it. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll continue to ski these. Uh, I'm excited to spend a lot more time on that 102. I'm excited to spend more time on the 88. Perfect. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Uh, in the meantime, let us know if you have any questions, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.